starting to put some clips together for my next YouTube video and I just have to show this azalea I know if you've been watching me in previous years I show this thing every year it just seems to be in the ideal location I guess partial shade partial Sun just gets bigger and has more flowers on it every year and it has an incredible fragrance I can smell it a long ways off um, very spicy almost like cinnamon and then if I can lower the camera down here sorry about that lowered the camera and somehow I managed to shut it off it's surrounded by a sea of blue uh, I think a lot of people think they might be forget-me-nots but it's a Veronica the name of which I no longer remember I think I started it from seed 25 or 30 years ago it is all over my property I put it in a couple of gardens and it just spread I love the thing it comes up in the lawn it comes up everywhere uh, most of its blossoms are spring and, and early summer. Sometimes it reblooms a bit, but it's mostly a spring thing, and then it disappears. Well, if you've been watching my videos over the years, you know how much I love raccoons. Well, last night I had a coon attack. This bed had four of the uh, golden nugget uh, buttercup type squash. And now we're down to two. I suspect it was digging to find grubs. Unfortunately, it didn't find any. If it had found them, it would have finished and dug up the entire bed. One of the plants, I doubt if that makes it, but I'll water it in a bit. I found that off to one side. You may find the other one. Yeah, here's the other one in here. And I don't know. Okay, I don't think this one is dug up. I think it just got buried when it was doing the digging. So that might make it. Don't dare put any water on it yet because the sun's still on it here. That would just cook it for sure. Unfortunately, it would pick the squash that I don't have any remaining. Um, I've given away the extra seedlings and I even gave away the golden nugget seed that I had left over to some younger gardeners starting here on the island. I'm very pleased to, to see that there's a, some people interested in gardening and they're also sort of running a small farm. They've got pigs and two little goats and hens and rabbits. And a couple of children, I guess, too. I met one little girl there. There's another one that's younger. But gave them a lot of my leftover seeds. So I don't have that anymore. And that is another scallopini. I've got scallopini everywhere. If I had uh, had a preference, I would rather the coon tore up some scallopini. I wouldn't be quite so upset. But Lost, maybe only lost one, and it might not. I'll water that. Squash plants are quite resilient. It might, that might even come back yet. But anyway, there's the first raccoon attack of the season. The only thing good about a raccoon, in my opinion, is they make good roadkill. Back at the corn cage, and I'm not sure if I'm showing you what I want you to see or not on the screen there. It's so bright, I can't tell discovering a couple of problems with growing corn in a cage. I don't think either one of them is very serious, but it isn't possible to get in there and do any weeding. That's driving me crazy. And I have had uh, about three, I think three last count, of the new corn seedlings that are coming up from the direct sown seeds uh, all of a sudden keel over and, and wilt and die. I suspect that is cutworms and I can't get in there. To check and find out but as I say there's, there's numerous plants there and there's only three so far that it's happened to so it probably isn't that serious a problem it just annoys me that's all I'm not going to take you from plot to plot like I did the last time to show you progress on everything it's only been a week and there isn't that much change but there's a few things that I want to point out so corn cage was number one I haven't shown this bed before this season because the seedlings were so small it was hard to pick them out but they are getting larger 
it's half a bed planted with cauliflower and the other half is planted with broccoli. Um, the half closest to the camera here is broccoli and the other end is, is cauliflower. I started the seedlings, if you remember, in that uh, raised bed at the house. Um, the thing that's on my deck, two or three feet high, a, a raised garden bed. And that worked very well. They didn't have to go through any transplant shock when I brought them out and they're coming along quite nicely. So far, no damage from the cabbage moth. I keep checking every day. I have uh, BT, Bacillus thermogensis, to, to use on them when that happens, and I'm sure it will, but maybe it's been too cold here or something. I haven't seen any little white moths yet this season. This bed I am growing chickpeas in. Uh, garbanzo beans, cheche, chickpeas, all the same thing, I guess. As you probably know, I'm a vegetarian. So I use a lot of chickpeas. I use canned ones, and I sometimes buy the dried ones and use them, but I've never grown my own before. So if anybody out there has grown them, let me know how it worked out for you. These have been in for, oh, not a terribly long period of time, 10 days maybe and there's reasonably good germination. There weren't a lot of seeds, it was a small package of seeds, and I think I'm probably getting somewhere as close to 90 or 95 percent germination so far. So, Supposedly they don't need support. <laughs> I'm always skeptical of that. If they say something doesn't need support, it usually ends up needing support. So I don't know what I might do later on as they grow taller, but let me know about your chickpea growing adventures. Do I, should I really expect something out of this little plot or not? If you can see off to the right there, there's also one asparagus plant, my only Mary Washington asparagus, my favorite. It makes the lovely big spears of asparagus, and I don't want to move it over to the other bed because I'm sure moving it would set it back for two or three years. So it's here with the chickpeas. Just a view from the doorway, looking inside the hoop house. I'm not going to take you from plant to plant, as I've already said. I do want to show you some of the chili peppers that are getting started, and then a quick look at three or four, four, I guess, different things that are growing in here that I never have to replant. They reseed themselves and I get more than enough every year. I only had to plant them once several years ago. I'm just going to go quickly from plant to plant on the ones that have already got some chilies and peppers started on them. This is the only sweet variety that I grow. It's a mini yellow uh, sweet pepper, like a bell pepper, only much smaller. And the one that you're looking at, fair size to it, I think that was probably already started on the plant before I brought them out. But there's been a lot more tinier ones that are starting to grow. There's been good pollination happening in here. I must have some bees or something in here, I guess. I only planted two of each of the hot varieties that I'm growing. So it's not going to be a huge crop, but I put them all together and I'll have enough hot chilies to do me, I'm sure. This is Aleppo. Uh, Kevin Bradley gave me the seed, gave me the seed for a number of these, but uh, I have two plants and they both have got a few of the chilies on them, green so far. I haven't used any. I should pick some green ones and use them. They usually have lots of heat too, but they're going to produce, Kevin. These are espalettes, the Basque chili. I still classify it as a chili, but it's extremely mild. Some of them don't have any heat at all. But they're setting a lot of good peppers, so that's good. And this is Matchbox, and it might be hard to pick out. There'll be little red firecrackers when they're fully ripe, but they're a small chili, probably why they're called Matchbox, I guess. But that's setting a lot of good fruit, and once again, that's from you, Kevin. Thank you very much. Now let's look at some things that uh, I never have to plant twice in here. Growing at the very edge of my cold frame that has the lettuce growing in it is ground cherries. Um, planted them once many years ago. I sort of consider it a curse, although I do have friends that like it, and so I try to give them a few plants every year. I don't understand why they don't have an acreage of it by now, because I've been giving them every year and I can't get rid of them here. But you always have ground cherries. You only have to plant them once. These are violas, or small pansies, um, maybe a quarter the size of the regular pansies, flowers. Um, they throw their seeds around in here and I let them do it. I've already 
uh, potted up and transplanted and given away dozens of them this year. Those will all be in bloom before the end of the season. And because they're in the hoopos here, they seem to all, mostly all, overwinter. And I see the first blooms on them usually in early March, uh, as long as there's no snow on the roof in here. So I use them in window boxes, I use them in gardens, and I give them away, and they're free. And this is mustard. I have two or three different kinds of mustard that grow in here. Um, one just off to the left of that, which is already starting to bloom, if you can see some yellow flowers there. And down below me directly here is the last one, if I can get it in shot here. And that, of course, is dill. To close things off, this is the mini red daikon radish, and I realize I did show those in the last video, but I think they're turning out to be a disaster. Seed packet said it wouldn't bolt well. I haven't had a single radish yet, and 90% of them are bolting and trying to go to flower. Usually when a radish does that, it's quite woody, so I pulled one yesterday, and yes, it's the same as a piece of hardwood. So I suspect I won't be getting a great cop off of these. Thank you very much for watching.